constructing
I will select a tax. I will get them to add to the system. My first numbers set up will be 24. The other one will be 15. So I know that 24 and 15 will be written under tens and minutes. So 24, I will write you under tens. And 4 under units. 15, 1 under units. And 5 under units. 4 plus 5, 8. Still under units. 2 plus 1, 3. If a student is able to add that, that means the student can add to the units. Isn't it? I can also have another task. That one is my question one. For my question two, now we have add 24 plus 48. 24 plus 48. Under unit now, I have 4 plus 8. Is it it? My student, I don't follow you. 8 plus 4 is what? 12. Remember, you are now in basic. Two. Eight plus four. Some students will write to twelve under units. You are going to see students writing like that. Some will write twelve, two and carry one. Writing two and carrying one is another scale. You know it's a scale. So that will lead us to the next step. In the next step, identify the criteria for the tax by developing explicit performance criteria which measure the extent to which students have mastered the scale and knowledge. Now, in the first question, there was no carrying. The student can add two digits for that. In the second question, there is carrying. There is another criteria. Some have mastered the first level of adding, but some have not mastered the second level of carrying one when it is more than 10, because you don't have up to 10 in the units, so you have to carry the whole class. I don't know if you are getting the budget. So ask what does good performance of this tax mean? The good performance is that they should be able to add the digit number and they should be able to carry and move to the next level when it is more than 10. How will I know they have done a good job at this tax? By asking them to determine proximity as question 1, 27 percent state as question 2, and so on. So I will never see that we did and those who can add and carry by giving them this different level of assessment tax, I should be able to differentiate those who can only add and those who have gone beyond handling to carry the next level. So there are different standards, there are different criteria that I have assessed in that same question. The different in the same kind of person. So, how would I create this name? All of them can add it. The person can add it 7 plus 8 as 15 under the same unit. The person added well, isn't it? He added it. But the other one that carried 1 to 10 did better. So, how would I assess them? Would I say that this first person does not know how to do it? So that one comes under is taking care of in the rubrics. Rubrics are just scoring guides. Once you have identified the criteria you want to look for as indicators of good performance, you decide next whether to consider the criteria analytically or holistically. To create authentic tasks, therefore, the assessor may employ the class acronym as a guide. We are G represents goal. What task do you want to 
what my spirit to achieve. Set the problem or challenges to be resolved. And so that should be able to act two digits on them. They should also be able to carry a move from good to bad or from tense to hot bed. What have you written under each of either tense or words? Role. What is the student's role in the class? Explain who students are in this area and what they are being asked to do. In this scenario, my students are basic two students. Uh, the basic two people, they are not called students, they are two people. And they should be able to add two digits number. If the two digits number they are adding, after units, it is more than 10, it takes to 10, and so on. Audience, who is the student target audience? Who are the students solving the problem? Are they solving for the teacher? For the parents or for who do they need to convince of the value and success of their solution for the problem? Remember, the audience is not limited to the instructor alone. When they go home, their parents will look at their work. So they are, they, they are no, the audience is not just the teacher. So we should consider. Against time. So that we consider the standard. What is the context? What's the challenge? Provide the context of the situation and any additional factors that will contribute to the resolution of the problem. Performance of products or purpose. What will students create? Explain the problem of performance that needs to be created and the larger purpose. Standard of criteria again for success. On what criteria are they going to be judged? Dictate the standard that must be met and how the work will be judged by the assumed. <coughs> now, for us to score the authentic class, we must have a rubric. Rubric is just an instrument that attempts to make subjective measurements as objective, clear, yeah, consistent, as defensible as possible by explicitly defining the criteria on which performance or achievement should be judged. It is a device for raising and interpreting data, data from observations, or learning assets, papers, papers, and relevant others. It is designed to allow for the differentiation between levels of achievement or development by communicating detailed information about what constitutes excellence. If you can pass the main part in the two tasks I have given my students. Yes, 23 plus 24 is the people that pass. 27 plus 28 is the people that also pass. But there are issues with problems. So what should be considered a customer? How will I create the difference? Well, I say that 7 plus 8 is no longer 50 because it is not written as it's supposed to be written. So that's what people is trying to help us to resolve. That kind of challenge. Now we are talking about that. How can we differentiate? between levels of achievements or developments by communicating detailed information about what constitutes excellence. Now, how do we construct a 
A clearly defined purpose is intention, as each component in the remote steps is the remote. Steps can be used as guide in constructing the rubric. According to more 15, step one, you review the standards that the product and performance is meant to address. In professional areas, you understand this better. When you are teaching anything, there is a standard in that profession that you want your students to attain. Review the standards that you want the student to achieve by performing that task. That's step one. Step two, establish or review the criteria that will be used to judge the student progress or performance and make sure they match the standards. I want my student to add two digits number. That's my standard. I will give them tax that will help them, that will enable me to see if they are actually able to add two digits number. Now, having done that, how do I assess them? How do I review? Wonder what I am looking for. The skills are there. If they have attained those skills. The first thing is that they are able to have. The second one is that they are able to have them to stay like that. Design the different levels of performance that match each criteria. The first criteria they are able to have. That's my first question. The second, they should be able to carry on. That's my second question. So I should be able to see. Questions in the tax I will give them. Be sure to choose words or phrases that show the actual differences among the levels. If I have asked them 2 plus 2, for 24 plus 24, I will give them for 24. That level I am looking for in the second criteria may not be there. Because in the second I tell you, I want to know those who will be able to add the two digits numbers and be able to carry when it is more than 10 and move it to 10. So I will give a tax that will make me see if they are able to perform that tax and if they are able to reach that level that I have set. That's my standard. <coughs> Make sure that they are observable. See, I have carefully selected my facts. So what I'm talking is observable. There are two types of rubrics. Analytic rubrics and holistic rubrics. The first one provides several scores for a tax. One for each different category being evaluated with descriptors. Use web performance to be evaluated for each criteria. The second provides a single score that summarizes the student's performance on the given task without descriptors. Use web all of the criteria are to be evaluated together. The general one we choose depends on the type of tax we want to evaluate. For analytic rubric, for example, for scoring seminar paper. In the seminar paper, we have organization, we have content, we have other criteria that we are looking now, let us take these two criteria here. The first criteria, organization, we look at the weight. We are giving the weight that is two. Of a half length, if you like, it depends on you. But the most important aspect are the other side. How do we look at the organization? How do we differentiate our student achievement level? Based on the profession. We can have exceptional, 
Whichever criteria we identify, whether we are using analytic proofing or holistic proofing, if the best the student answer is yes or no, that means exception. You give four points. If the student answer is just what is expected, excellent. Yes, three points. Two points, yes, but. Yes, but. One point. So this is what a uh, big consistent in the form of the points. So, Thank you. 